My name is uh, Daryl Rader. I'm the president and CEO of uh, Menorum Gold. Before I begin, I just want to cover some forward-looking statements because this last sort of 12-month period since COVID hit uh, Mexico um, <laughs> definitely sort of played a bit fast and loose with uh, some of our plans expiration-wise moving forward. So please do your due diligence before in investing. Please uh, take a look at this forward-looking statement. You'll see it on our website in the presentation section. Uh, for those of you that don't know Menorum, Menorum was formed originally as a MAG gold concept vehicle. So we have a number of the same founders as MAG silver, uh, but more importantly, we have a very similar exploration metho methodology, which is we're looking for new high-grade discoveries in Mexico. We started out on the gold side and we ended up making a, a discovery on the silver side, and now a, a silver project is our flagship project, the Alamo Silver Project. But if you take a look at our track record in Mexico between Dr. Peter McGaw and David Jones, there's some of the largest gold and silver discoveries that were made in recent memory in Mexico. These are, are very active members of our team. Peter is a founder and a director and David's a director as well. Uh, besides our, our flagship Alamos project, we have a pipeline of district, district scale projects. One of the things we wanted to do here with the company is have a pipeline because when you're when you're doing early stage exploration, we know the odds. Um, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to focus on a, a process where on the gold space, we wanted to see at least multi-million ounce potential. And on the silver space, we wanted to see at least 100 million ounce potential. So as we went through these projects from the grassroots stage, drilling them, as soon as the target didn't look like it was big enough or a little different than what we were looking at, we either dropped the project or JV'd it replace that project and uh, replace that project with another one in the pipeline and kept developing it. So as of today, 90% of our time and money is spent at the Alamos project and the other 10% of the money is, is basically spent on the Santa Marta Copper Gold VMS district that we're just drill permitting as well as the Arifero Gold project that we're permitting. Uh, you can see on the strong capital structure, we have uh, just over three and a half million dollars in the treasury. Uh, we just announced a bought deal that's uh, through uh, heavy institutional um, participation is going to be taking uh, another eight million. So we'll have over 11 million dollars in the treasury to develop our projects um, over the next six to eight months here. Key thing to note here is, as I mentioned, COVID hit Menorum pretty hard between July and December of 2020. We drilled with no problem. We had a COVID uh, sort of clinic developed on the project that was testing everybody coming onto the project. We had a base camp. And as you can see from our share price, we had steady news and we mirrored the price of silver. At Christmas time of last year, a lot of students, family members came from all over, visited the communities on our project. And suddenly we got into a situation where maybe there was a death in the region every couple of weeks to multiple deaths a day in the region. And that continued on through to almost about May. And so when this was starting to come to everyone's attention in early January, the local community asked us to take a break from drilling, just wait till they had a handle on COVID. And so while our peer group's been trading up closer to their 52 week highs and the market's finally rewarding drill results, Menorah has sort of been having to sit there and just bide its time. Thankfully, as of late May, we got the notice that it's time to go back in and drill. So we're going back now. We're going to be drilling here in a couple of weeks and we'll resume our steady news flow. And obviously on the share price side, the main objective is to start bridging that gap and get closer to our 52-week high. The other key item to notice, we do have analyst coverage from Agentis, and that's something that we're, uh, we're working on um, getting some additional coverage. As far as the project portfolio, Alamos is our flagship. You can see some of our other projects. Um, the Adelita, we have a JV on with Infinitum, which is the uh, backers behind Reina Silver. Tavicha, we have Fortuna drilling on the project that's directly adjacent to San Jose Mine. So as we get Alamos ramped up here and get the news flow out, we'll also be getting news flow out of the JVs, both of which I believe are planning to drill in the latter half of this year. And we're also looking at doing a few JVs on our non-core projects as a way of advancing them. So at Alamos, the, the opportunity here um, presented itself several years ago when a, a local family out of Hermosillo in Sonora spent about six years and $2 million US consolidating a historical district. This is a historical district that contains three mines on two veins that produce 200 million ounces of silver. 
This family is the same family that vended the Santa Elena project to Silvercrest number one. And this infrastructure family is the same group that is basically doing everything but geology for Santa, uh, for um, Silvercrest number two at Las Chispas. Um, at our project, they do everything from drilling to permitting community relations. We take care of the geological side. So when they brought this company, uh, this project, I should say, to our attention, we right away looked at this and saw, okay, there's a lot of historical, produ um, historical production in the camp. We know that it would appear that the mines ended in mineralization. Subsequent to the acquisition, we, we acquired some historical data you can see here that show that the mines continued up depth. I won't read out the results, but you know some of them are very material, including 4.6 meters of 2,800 grams silver. But what we did as a company is we decided we know that there's leftover mineralization, but we want to look for new things that the old timers missed. And this next slide just sort of shows you what the result of that work was. Over the last four and a half, five years, we discovered 24 new vein systems, most of which have seen no historical production whatsoever. A number of them have seen a little bit of sampling, a little bit of uh, uh, sorry, a little bit of a sampling, a little bit of um, little sort of mine declines, little shafts that go down several meters. But to the most part, there was really nothing done. And so we mapped these all out. You can see the vein footprint grew from 500 meters by four and a half kilometers to 11 by six kilometers. And we focused on these historically non-producing veins, these veins that for some reason were left behind. So what we did is we mobilized a couple of drill rigs. We ended up having three drill rigs. And in our phase one drill program, we wanted to prove that this is a high grade silver district, not just three historical mines with remnant mineralization. We ended up drilling 19 vein systems, 14 of them returned high grade results. And that gave us sort of the idea now that, okay, we're onto a silver district. It gives us an idea that what kind of potential we could see here. These systems are shooty silver systems. They occur in shoots on the vein systems. And what we wanted to do in the first program is put a hole or two into every single vein system we have on the project. And on that basis, start prioritizing targets. And as it says there, 14 return high grade intercepts. And we are now in our phase two following that up. This gives you some idea of our phase one results. They're all over the place because the drilling actually occurred all over the place. You see things like Europa Guadalupe, which was our discovery hole, two and a half kilometer long vein. First hole in, we hit 8.25 meters, true thickness of 1700 grams silver. One thing I didn't uh, note was we are bordering Mexico's third largest open pit copper mine. So this is a very polymetallic system and copper rich, which of course with copper prices today is a a nice base metal to have along with our, our primary silver mineralization. And what you see here is that some holes like San Jose, 10 meters of 200 grams, it looks like we're getting close to a silver shoot, but the grades quite aren't quite where a, a silver shoot would be in this district. Other areas, nine, 90 centimeters to a meter of four to 500 grams silver. What that tells us is the vein can host high grade mineralization. We need to go back and do step out drilling and figure out where shoots form on the system. So phase two, we started drilling in July. And as I mentioned, it unfortunately stopped in at Christmas time last year and has yet to resume. And thankfully we'll be here in a couple of weeks. The, the two priorities behind our phase two are number one, defining silver shoots. So we are aggressive drillers. We're not drilling sort of resource drilling. We're not trying to drill these, these potential shoots into Swiss cheese. We simply want to figure out as quickly as possible how large these potential shoots are. We believe we're onto two of them, one at Europa Guadalupe, one at Promontorio at depth. We're also focused on discovering new, new silver shoots. And these include targets like San Jose and some of the other areas we'll drill include places like Anna and Alessandra that I'll discuss here very uh, momentarily. So in phase two thus far, we drill just, un just over 14,000 meters. Uh, we are continuing with another minimum 15,000 meters expected to start late June and complete just around Christmas time this year. This gives you a very brief idea. One thing I mentioned again was we stopped because of COVID. You can see as we were drilling this, we were drilling this logistically. We had our base camp west of the third target there, which is San Jose on the left. As we started moving towards the center of the camp, we shut down, didn't restart. So we want to get back to drilling number, especially number one and two, which seem to be potential silver shoots, but we also want to get into number four and five. Number four, for instance, is a three kilometer long vein 
we popped one hole in there, hit about 30 grams silver over three meters and about 15% combined base metals. Ali Sunder is a copper gold vein. We have a number of samples on surface grading in excess of 100 grams per ton gold. So we want to get in there, start looking for silver shoots in these systems. And the concept here is, is over the next two years, we want to get to a monetization event. That means we want to get to a place where we're either going to sell this for top dollar or bring in a partner sort of like Mag Silver to develop this into production. To achieve that, the focus is getting a sufficient number of silver shoots. If you sort of Google it, there's a number of major and mid-tier silver producers that talk about what they like to see in a new discovery. It's usually at least four to five silver shoots. So that's what we're focused on delineating here over the next year and a half is getting up to that total number of shoots and then systematically drilling them off and putting them into a resource category. This just shows you a little bit of where we believe a potential shoot is at San Jose. The, you see a lot of results. Some of these wider intercepts, like um, almost 12 meters of 200 grams, have much higher sort of uh, core grades. Uh, I believe that one has about three meters of 600 grams in the core of that one. Um, so we're getting an idea of what these systems look like here, but we believe the trend is increasing grade at depth. So that is something we'll be testing here in uh, a couple of weeks. Promontorio is another system where we believe we're just expanding on existing silver shoots to depth. We have holes up to 150 meters below the deepest workings and we're still in high grade mineralization. You can see the uh, grades here on the side. They're very high grade polymetallic results. Oops. San Jose is one of these sort of potential silver shoots. You can see we haven't put too many holes in it yet, but they're quite widely spaced. We started sort of with that 10 meters of 200 grams and we're now getting down into, at our deepest hole was true thickness, two and a, just under two and a half meters of 460 grams per ton silver. That shows us we're getting into higher grades. We want to go a bit deeper there and step out a bit to the Southwest because these shoots tend to um, dip to the Southwest. So for Alamos, as I mentioned, we're going to see a lot of news flow, a lot of drill results moving forward. It's 90% of our time and money. On the district scale project side of things, besides news coming out of the Adelita project and the Tevicha project, and you can see some of the, the historical drill results there, our sort of 1B flagship project is the Santa Marta project. This is a large copper gold VMS that we've been permitting for a while. We've made a significant headway on that front and we're working towards getting drill permits for that by the end of the year. Uh, for those of you that know the project, this is a, a virgin VMS district in southwestern Mexico. This is a project that um, David Lowell came down back in 2013, liked it so much he invested personally in Menorman and ultimately JV'd the project as the flagship project for Lowell Copper, which is now Equinox Gold. Um, due to some regional issues, they, they left the project. We've since been getting it ready to drill. As I mentioned, uh, we hopefully will have the permits in in the second half of this year. As soon as we get those, we'll go in, uh, probably start with a 3,000 meter program. Orifero is just one of these high impact projects. Again, high grade gold on surface. We're going to go uh, drill at depth and see if all these high grade veins don't coalesce at depth and become a larger system. And that's something we'll be drilling in the second half, probably around 2,000 meters as well. So as I mentioned, 15,000 meters of drilling at Alamos, probably about three to 3,500 at Santa Marta, another 2,000 to 2,500 at Arifero, all expected to happen in the second half of this year. So we're gonna have a lot of news flow moving forward here. So the investor catalyst portion, here's our contact info, menorum.com. You can find all the information you need. We also have a YouTube channel that has some interesting interviews with uh, market personalities, as well as some of our directors, such as uh, Dr. Peter McGaw. And I think it's uh, pretty self-explanatory what our, our news flow here is and our investor catalyst moving forward. <music>